Uh, next slide, please. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the door uh, of the uh, Torah Ark of Aaron HaKodesh uh, made of shita wood. Um, it was imported from Eretz Israel. Um, somehow Löw could uh, arrange this. And in the middle and uh, on the right hand side, in the middle, you can see the parochet and on the right hand side, uh, you can see the Torah mantle. These were also uh, these were used at the time of the inauguration. These were also designed by together by Lipot Baumhorn and uh, Emmanuel Löw. They have the same style as the synagogue. And recently, with a grant from the Rothschild Foundation, uh, we were able to hire a local textile restorator to have these restored. Next slide, please. Uh, the most important element of the building is the uh, stained glass dome, uh, which symbolizes the creation. Uh, originally, uh, Emmanuel Löw wanted to uh, place 24 different kinds of symbols and plants in the different articles of the, um, of the glass dome, but uh, Manu wrote, who was the... Uh, who, who implemented the glass window, was able to convince him that at this height, at the height of 48 meters, it's simply impossible to, to recognize these. So now it's simply stars. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, as I said, the, uh, the pendentives bear four uh, inscriptions. These describe three concepts with four words. So it's Torah, it's Avoda, and Gmilut Hasadim, uh, meaning Torah, service, and acts of loving kindness. And these are the basis of Judaism. And also, these were so such important messages that they were also put on main um, locations in the building. Next one, please. Uh, the cross vaulted fields of the four porch corners uh, are decorated with different plants. Uh, in the southeast, you can see the wild rose, which is a symbol of the Torah. In the northeast, it's the Colossians, symbolizing the books of the former prophets. While in the northwest, it's uh, the castor, symbolizing the latter prophets. And finally, in the southwest, walnuts represent the writings. So the final section of the Tanakh and these four books of the Tanakh are uh, represented on the four porch corners. Uh, here you can also see uh, the original designs of how it should be decorated. Partly it was written by Chief Rabbi Emmanuel Löw. Next slide, please. By creating the painted windows of the synagogue, Emmanuel Löw aimed to present the Jewish year. He made sketches for each of the 10 windows with the help of which glass painter, Manu Roth, drew the cardboards needed for the construction. Ritual objects and plant motifs symbolize the holidays presented in 10 pictures on the ground floor windows. On this picture, you can see the everyday life. In the middle, there are the thistles. Next slide, please. These are the windows on the galleries. Uh, uh, on the gallery, on the left hand side, you can see the building of the old synagogue depicted when it was under flood in 1879. On the left uh, bottom corner, you can see a boat. And then, of course, on the right hand side, you can see the new synagogue of Seged. Uh, above it, there are some uh, two menorahs and uh, Kohanit blessing hands. Next slide, please. Uh, these are uh, the windows depicting Shabbat with uh, objects that also my family is soon going to use. The Kiddush cup, the Torah scroll and the Shabbat candles on the left hand side. 
Next slide, please. As I said, the dome represents uh, the creation. And uh, here you can see the original plan of Immanuel Leuve when he still wanted to decorate these uh, 24 articles with the 24 uh, books of the Hebrew Bible. And this is uh, something that the glass painter could uh, convince him not to do. And I think now we are coming to the last slide. No, not yet. Um, here, Agnes presented the relations of the uh, of the styles used in the uh, Seged synagogue with other um, other buildings and other synagogues of the time. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, Lipot Baumhorn's oeuvre can be um, can be uh, categorized under five big uh, epochs. The first synagogues of Lipot Baumhorn were built in Oriental style. Uh, at the beginning of his career as an architect, uh, Baumhorn continued the orientalizing tradition of synagogue architecture in homage to Ludwig Förster, the creator of the synagogues in Tempel Gasse and Dohain Street. The four synagogues built between 1897 and 1902 Timisoara Factory City, Solnok, Grosso, and Rieka brought along an expansion regarding the forms. He took part in several rounds of the design competition for a new large synagogue to be built in a part of Budapest named Lipot Város, which you can see here. Six synagogues were built in this period, most of them in the geometric version of the brick strip Hungarian Art Nouveau facade ornamentation. Novi Sad and Budapest on Doja György. Road. The small synagogue with a plastered facade in Murska Sobota, Pava Street, Budapest, and Nyiregyháza are characterized by a simple style without a dome. These were the last ones. The next slide, please. And here we come to the end of our presentation. Uh, I'm sorry for all the technical problems. Merci beaucoup. Merci. On donne envie de voyager, hein, c'est terrible. Hein. Bravo. Hein. Merci de, de, de donner envie de voyager parce que là, on se dit Seged, Timisoara euh, et le voyage. Euh, alors, sauf si vous avez des questions à poser, euh, vous pouvez les poser en français. On trouvera bien quelqu'un qui pourra traduire dans une langue euh, autre. Et je crois que de, de, Dora comprend le français. Et Agnès aussi. Donc, euh, on pourra traduire si vous avez des questions précises. Sinon, on passe à l'exposé suivant. Alors, on continue le voyage. Monsieur, euh, monsieur a... Lier, oui. Bonjour, c'est Lila Zambou de Budapest et j'aimerais vous remercier pour cette intervention. I would like to thank you for the presentation, ladies. And uh, I just, uh, I heard at the beginning that you are working on this international cooperation and this is a very international research, as you both said, that one of you is in Finland and the other, of course, uh, Agnes, you are in Hungary. And uh, of course, in Professor Neumann's uh, presentation, we also learned that there are new projects such as the rediscovery of Art Nouveau and also like Jewish heritage uh, in this region. And uh, I just wanted to, to ask you if you also like take part in this particular program together or are you engaged in other programs? Because it's really uh, nice to, to note that there are so many new initiatives now that are both aiming to discover our nouveau heritage and also the Jewish heritage of the region. Alors, je vais peut-être un tout petit peu intervenir parce qu'il y a une partie de, des gens qui sont là qui ne comprennent pas nécessairement l'anglais. Euh, D'ailleurs, euh, l'anglais sera bientôt une langue qui ne sera plus une langue européenne, sauf en Irlande, euh, où elle est en concurrence avec le gaélique, d'ailleurs. Euh, je vous, je vous présente peut-être, Lila, parce que nous sommes en contact depuis quelques heures à peine. Oui, voilà. euh, Madame Zambo est, en, doc, est doctorante à l'École des hautes études en sciences sociales et en co-tutelle avec l'Université de Budapest. Et elle travaille précisément sur les questions de patrimoine 
de patrimoine juif euh, et de synagogue. Et elle m'a parlé d'une de, des grandes synagogues dont on a beaucoup parlé, qui est actuellement en Serbie, qui s'appelle, dans la ville qui s'appelle Subotica, euh, en hongrois Sobotko, je crois. Euh, et euh, donc c'est une des, des synagogues qui, qui devrait aussi être, être évoquée. La question qu'elle pose aux, aux intervenants consiste à savoir dans quelle mesure les programmes qui sont engagés pour la préservation patrimoniale sont communs et comment, euh, vous me dites si c'est bien euh, l'essentiel que je traduis, comment ils, ils peuvent participer à des programmes communs euh, de préservation de, ce, de ces patrimoines. 